All right, Facebook friends, part two of the Poor Me Control drama. Now, as I was saying, we always can tell when we come into the energy field of the poor me because we're immediately drawn into a particular type of dialogue in which we're pulled off center. Out of the blue, we'll begin to feel guilty for no reason, as though we're being cast into the role by the poor me or the other person. The basic tone and strategy are always the same. Always it's some kind of bid for sympathy and an assertion that you are somehow responsible. Now the obvious strategy of the poor me is to throw us off balance. They were rising balance. <laughs> Anyways. And to win our energy by creating a feeling of guilt or doubt on our part. Do any of you know anybody like this? You know, for instance, oh, well, my birthday would have been better, but you weren't there because you were with your family or, or just, you know, making you feel guilty for something really you didn't do. Um, you know, people don't mean to do it, but if you know somebody like that, um, yeah, I'll tell you how to deal with it here in a second. I'm kind of new to these YouTube videos still, and there's neighbors watching. <laughs> now, as soon as we do this, um, by buying into the guilt, we're stopping and looking through the other person's eyes at his or her world. And as soon as that's done, this person gets the boost of our energy added to his or her own and makes them feel more secure. Remember, this drama is almost completely unconscious. It flows from a personal view of the world and a strategy for controlling others adopted in early childhood. To the poor me, the world is a place where people can't be counted on to meet one's needs for nurturing and well-being. So basically a lot of people that have endured um, childhood trauma um, neglectful parents, stuff like that, people with PTSD, people with some mental issues kind of tend to have, this is the, le this is the, like, the least bad of all the control dramas, so I'm kind of blessed to have to only deal with this one most of the time, from me, <laughs> but anyways, um, so yeah, it's too scary a place of risk, pursuing these needs directly or assertively is too scary. In the poor me's world, the only reasonable way of acting is to bid for sympathy through guilt, trips, and perceived slights. Unfortunately, because of the effect of the world, these unconscious beliefs and intentions, very often, the same kind of abusive people the poor me fears are exactly the ones that they allow into their lives. That's a big one right there. A lot of people that are empaths seem to attract narcissists. <laughs> I don't know if that really has any much to do with that, but yeah. And the events that befall them are often traumatic. It's like a repetition, re repetition, repetitive of trauma, 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 until you learn how to defeat this um, control drama. The universe responds by producing exactly the kind of world the person expects and in this way, the drama is always circular, like I just said, and self-validating. The poor me is caught unknowingly in a vicious trap. Okay, now we're going to do a part three, and that's going to be dealing with the poor me.